mighty Pharaoh, behold, the priests of the old gods. Why have you come before us, Holy One? Mighty Pharaoh, I come on a most unpleasant mission. Are there sad tidings you wish to convey? Mighty Pharaoh, you have profaned the gods of our ancestors in your worship of that. Hold your tongue, priests. Those are words of sacrilege and contempt. O oh, Great One, I come not to insult thee or desecrate the Aten. I am merely an instrument through which the gods who the Pharaoh has abandoned choose to speak. Is not Pharaoh the living god of Egypt, priest? Pharaoh is the living god. Is the Pharaoh or is the Aten the ruler of Egypt? You dare to match wits with me on Pharaoh's power. I shall send you to converse with the gods myself. No, my wife. Do not shame yourself in the eyes of Aten. Prostrate thyself, serpent, whilst we decide your fate. Such treason should not go unpunished, my husband. To nurture peace and love, one must dispense mercy, my wife. Stand upon your feet, priest. Go and condemn the old gods, for if I were a believer of them, you would surely be dead. But by the grace of the merciful Atom, you are forgiven for your disloyalty and irreverence. Now leave us, for even Pharaoh can lose his patience. My dear son, I have made haste traveling overnight to see you and Nefertiti. Queen Mother, what could be so urgent that you and not one of the servants would travel so swiftly across the desert to bring us a message? Akhenaten, it is the state of our nation, Egypt, once the crown jewel of Africa the capital of the world and the pride of the gods. Now our borders are threatened from the Mediterranean to Nubia and we stand on the precipice of internal collapse. Queen Mother, I dare say that the long journey has rendered you weary and delirious. Surely you exaggerate about the state of our great nation. Son, how could you know what is happening among the people? You have moved the capital from Thebes to this isolated oasis far from the heartbeat of your subjects. But mother, it was God, the Aten, who commanded me to abandon the gods of old and remove my family to this holy ground. The better to worship him in song and prayer without earthly distractions. But son, you are destroying the country. It is one thing to pay homage to the Aten. But at Naughton, you have also changed the sacred texts. You have revamped the artwork, and worst of all, you have left our country weak and vulnerable to attack by our enemies. Prior to his death, your father would have never tolerated these conditions. The Queen Mother, my husband has transformed the nation to please the Aten. The time for song and prayer has passed. In the womb of our enemies, there is grows a jackal of war that will feed upon our nation if we are not strong and vigilant. War begets more war and consume all who partakes of it. We must purge our nation of all hatred and hostility and embrace our enemies as our friends. Such wisdom has already filled the Nile with corpses, my son. Before I left Thebes, Syrians sacked a small village along one of the tributaries in the north. They had not seen such a slaughter since the days of the Hyksos. Do you not see the need to prepare our troops for war? We did not realize that conditions were so grave. You should listen to the Queen Mother. I have heard the Queen Mother, but not even she who gave me birth can take the place of God. 
He has imbued my soul with so much wisdom and love as to vanquish the very thought of strife. We must seek to embrace. We must seek to transform the minds and hearts of our enemies so there be no need for war. Forgive me, my husband. Long live the Aten. He has filled you with the warmth and compassion that transcends the animosities that separate other men. I, too, share your love for the Aten and shall remain eternally grateful to you as to him. My beloved wife, whose beauty and wisdom are unsurpassed in Egypt and beyond, let us return to the garden. We're under the rays of the sun, we can unite in prayer to Aten for peace to prevail in all of Egypt and the entire world. 